John, I just wanted to ask a brief question um, concerning uh, rising above through faith um, the desires for created things. And I have found that through a relationship which has been built through prayer of the heart, that when I'm faced with um, something in my daily life, which might be a good thing, but I'm tempted to overdo it, to go to extremes. For example, I love reading fiction and sometimes I read it too much and I don't leave time for other things. Then what is giving me the strength is this inner call from the Lord within me, whom I'm used to listening to now through prayer of the heart, who is calling me away constantly from this. And there, there comes a point in time when I don't feel comfortable anymore. And I just have to do it. But it is a very strong pull. The desire is very, very strong. And um, now that you've mentioned that you have likened it to crumbs, so my reading of fiction is just in, is throwing away time when I could be imbibing living water. Um, so I... Uh, I'm just wondering if prayer of the heart is sort of the big weapon that we can use where, where God becomes increasingly important because we're offering everything to Jesus and we're forgetting at that moment that he's there and we're forgetting to offer. So we're leaving the poor um, God all by himself in his little corner. Mm -hmm. And so for me, my way forward is, is through that. And I was wondering, you know, if I was, Okay, if you were, you think this is okay. Or thank, you for your, thank, thank you, Francesca, for your um, uh, important uh, question. Um, let me just uh, put, just uh, say maybe two, two or three things. Uh, first and, and foremost, um, the um, uh, it's not me who stated the crumbs. It's it's uh, Saint John of the Cross. I, I know you, this is what you meant, but anyway, just to clarify, um, compared creatures to to, to crumbs uh, falling from uh, God's table and rising. Um, this is what we just saw in lesson thirteen. Um, first and foremost, creatures could sometimes, not always, sometimes, because we can have a very a very strong desire, one main desire that is like devouring all our, our life and energy, you know, I don't know, a, a, a love or a pursuit of uh, richness or uh, I don't know. But we can have also small bits here and there. Um, uh, I think that looking toward creatures is looking toward multiplicity. Um, and I think, in my humble view, and according to a proper reading of chapter 13, which we will see uh, hopefully soon, um, of the ascent of Mount Carmel, um, everything is done because of the love of, of Jesus. Therefore, the main desire, positive desire, constructive desire, needed desire, is uh, to desire Jesus himself, as St. John of the Cross said, to rise above, no? to, to search for Jesus himself. So I think that um, it, we don't need to focus on which desire for creatures we need to stop, refrain from, or fight. I, I think that would be uh, a long journey I'm not sure it would be fully fruitful. I think the, the, a better technique, practical technique, is to focus on Jesus and to increase this desire, our desire for him, and to ask for it. No, My prayer could be, Lord, give me that um, desire for you, the love for you, a love that strong that it goes um, that sort of helped me rise above uh, the rest. 
um, because yes, we do love our fathers, our mother, our um, daughter, our son, um, our husband or friend. I mean, you, you know, the list is there, is long. And uh, there is nothing wrong in that, but it could sort of take over our heart. And therefore uh, it's important to uh, focus on uh, on the, the love of our life, uh, Jesus himself. Now, you say, so here are two things, no? Not to look toward, better not to look toward the multiplicity of the crumbs, but to focus on the table, and the table, the food is Jesus himself. So it's uh, two points linked to, to each other. Now, you mentioned the prayer of the heart, or for others, contemplative prayer, um, silent prayer, adoration. Why this prayer is important uh, and serves a lot the purpose uh, that you are uh, mentioning, you know, which is um, helping us to increase that love for, for Jesus. Because simply, it's, a, it's, a, it's an exclusive time that we dedicate for Jesus himself. Prayer of the heart, by definition, as it is practiced as setting a time for it, not during, throughout the day, we can have, live in the presence of God and love Jesus from time to time, have arrow prayers uh, throughout the day, different, different moments, different short, very short moments. That's, that's fine. That's good. We need to do that. But prayer of the heart also is a set time as the Franciscans and in the 15th century practiced it, 15th and 16th century in, in Spain practiced it, as Teresa of Avila practiced it and recommends it, as many other monks even from the Eastern uh, churches do practice it for long moments, uh, etc. Now, it's a set time. It doesn't mean that outside of the time we were not with him, but it's an exclusive time where we stop all sorts of activities. So in a way, it's already, it's a date, it's a choice, it's a rising up, it's an exclusive time that I dedicate purely for him. Seen by the eyes of the world, it's a time that I am losing. What are you doing? You are losing time just sitting there like a lemon, not doing anything. That's a lost time, bin it. You see, that's the world saying this. It's better to read, it's better to study, it's better to pray in a different way. You know, there are plenty of voices that will say that to us when we decide to dedicate that time. Now, this time, is not only an exclusive time, but it's a time where my eyes and his eyes cross each other, where my heart and his heart are against each other. It's a time where I'm focusing on him. So obviously, in faith, obviously, when you see somebody, you desire that person. And please don't hesitate to use icons, to use images, that's, that's, that helps our faith to keep focused on Jesus. Teresa of Avila says it relentlessly, especially chapter 26 in um, Way of Perfection. She says, fix your eyes on him. Well, when you fix your eyes, what happens? Your desire increases. It's obvious. It's in the text. It's, it's between the lines in her text. Fix your eyes on him. So what am I doing during the prayer of the heart? Of course, we have distractions. I'm totally with you. We are distracted. But still, you said it's a date. I'm here for you, Jesus. Exclusively. I'm not doing anything else. It's a crazy decision because the world will say, oh, you're losing time. What are you doing? It's better to do this or do, do, do that. And we are tempted. No, I don't know you, but I am tempted. So when I say, okay, now it's the prayer of the heart, I'm tempted to do many things, even throughout the prayer of the heart. Uh, I'm tempted sometimes to say, okay, grab my phone and, 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 and text somebody something. No, you get an idea. No, you want to text somebody. No. So it's difficult. It's difficult. So it's like waves. 
you renew that. These waves are not only a focusing on Jesus, but a renewal of my love to him. So it's a, like an exclusive moment of love with, with Jesus, faith and love, of course, with Jesus. So obviously the desire, it, it works deeply in us. The prayer of the heart is not something that we expect to feel or to sense or to see. The prayer of the heart is something we do and we know that the grace of God works deeply in us, roots us in God. All the, I don't know if you know the dispersible aspirin, no? Or uh, if, you, if you drop it in the water, suddenly the, the, the entire uh, glass of water becomes uh, a bit, uh, how do you call that? Uh, effervescent. Say again? Say again? I said effervescent, but maybe yeah, but it, it, it's, uh, uh, no, it's, it's becomes like it. blurry. You can't you can't see clearly. It's just not cloudy. Of, huh? Cloudy. Cloudy. Yes. Voila. Cloudy. So our day is cloudy. When we practice the prayer of the heart, it has sort of this magnet that sort of brings all uh, uh, the the the, the uh, uh, impurities, bring them down, and we then have clarity. Do we necessarily, ex do we expect to see something during the prayer of the heart? No, we expect to love, as Riz of Avila says. We are not here to find amazing uh, thoughts or beautiful thoughts or to formulate beautiful prayers to the Lord. No, she said, go spontaneously and tell him uh, your love. Uh, be spontaneous, uh, you see? So it works deeply in us, in us, we don't necessarily see uh, immediately the result, but on the long run, it um, increases, and I'm answering here your question, it increases that um, privileged, but really privileged relationship with Jesus. It strengthens that relationship. You know, we receive communion, but communion takes uh, from our time, maybe four minutes, five minutes maximum, which is a disaster when you think about it, because it didn't have enough time to root itself in us, mm. to feed us. You see, the notion of time and space in, in uh, communion is completely lost. Teresa of Avila insists a lot uh, toward her daughters and of course us, because that's a teaching. She says after mass stay in the choir for 10-15 minutes in silence you know the priest uh, the mass is finished now he went to the sacristy but the nuns are still there inside in silence why because you give time to to jesus you give space the space is your heart is your being you give time for that we do not allow the com communion to to realize its effect in us so what is communion is Jesus himself. And what is the prayer of the heart? It's, it's in my humble opinion, and I'm following here Teresa of Avila, it gives time for the host to sort of fill our being entirely. I, again, we're not expecting to feel, to, to sense, to feel or to see. It's all in faith, but there, why? Because it's working in our spirit, the deepest part of our being. But it is really and truly working. Jesus is working and feeding us. But um, um, there, above the clouds, beyond the clouds, you see. So on the long run, yes, I'm answering your question. Uh, in my humble opinion, I do agree that the love for Jesus will grow if we dedicate that time for him. But be careful, be careful. This only is not enough. If we only do prayer of the heart, but we forget, uh, <clears throat> for instance, to, in, according to Teresa of Avila, practice the virtues in a, in, a, in, a, in a perfect way, which will correspond in St. John of the Cross to this uh, chapter 13, which is put full uh, decision and determination into doing uh, Jesus' uh, will, putting his word into practice, uh, Lexio Divina, how, how uh, uh, challenging is Lexi Divina because it's, uh, it's, it's the perfection that Teresa of Avila talks about, which is um, uh, putting his word into practice. So I think uh, we need to remember that 
maybe in the beginning, yes, it will have a, 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 an amazing effect, this uh, priority given to uh, a date with Jesus, uh, prayer of the heart, contemplative prayer, but maybe after a while, if it's not supported, I'm not talking, of course, about you, I'm talking in general, if it's not supported by this determination, this perseverance in the practice of the word of God, putting into practice what he says to us, Lectio Divina, or the, the perfect practice uh, of the three virtues, uh, charity, humility, and detachment, called, um, mentioned by Therese Bavel in the way of perfection, then, of course, it weakens the structure, because you have people who... Uh, this is what Teresa of Avila says uh, twice, at least in her works. No, if you do not uh, work on the virtues, translated for us maybe like Sudivina, um, uh, you will uh, remain dwarfs, dwarfs spiritually. It means that the prayer of the heart will not allow you to grow. You see, and then we can have deviations also. No. Uh, I'm not talking about you at all. I'm just talking in general before whoever is, is listening, no? Uh, remember the story, this nun who said to Teresa of Avila, she was a prioress in, uh, in one of her monasteries, and then she said, I want to stay more, give more time for the prayer of the heart in the chapel while she was supposed to be in the kitchen. So Teresa of Avila said, no, you go to the kitchen. Jesus, God, is in the bottom of the pants, pots and pans, no? Bottom mm -hmm. of the pants. So cleaning, you'll find Jesus at the bottom. Uh, of course, this is, this is the genius of these saints, no? And doctors of the church, no? Uh, it, it shows that yes, there is time for everything, uh, and, but this doesn't repla replace that, no? Um, <laughs> discernment, discernment, okay? More, more questions on on uh, on this? I think Marty, you wanted to say something about that. I don't know, um, or blessing. No. No. Okay. Well, I think we should be reasonable um, this time, and unfortunately, stop a bit early. Uh, we will uh, just be content with this uh, uh, beautiful question commenting, of course, it's a question on uh, ch uh, chapter six that we were reading. It's uh, lesson 13a, question and answer. So we'll stop here. Um, I think that's, that's, that's enough to feed us, no? So if you don't mind, we say together, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Um, thank, thank you, you very much. John.